Exam anxiety is a form of performance anxiety, and it's characterised by a fear of performing in front of people. Whether that performance is a presentation that you're doing in front of a crowd, or whether that performance is sitting an exam. Symptoms of exam anxiety can be physical, cognitive, behavioural, and emotional, and they include things like shaking, fidgeting, panic attacks, avoidance, going blank, even getting angry, and experiencing low self-esteem. And as a general rule, it's caused by a whole host of things, but the most common ones are a fear of failure, a fear of disappointing someone, having a poor test history, and being unprepared. Now in January 2021, so this month in fact, 82% of teachers reported that tests and exams have the biggest impact on pupils' mental health. In addition to that, research has shown that in the UK, over 40% of students suffer with extreme exam anxiety at some point in their life. So exam anxiety is hugely common, and it's also quite unfortunate given that we live in a test-conscious, test-giving culture in which the lives of people are at least in part determined by their test performance. It's also no surprise that given the importance we place on these tests, they can actually have a profound impact on people and can form the basis of their self-judgments, their aspirations, and their fears. And they can actually become a serious obstacle to demonstrating academic achievement. So the aim of this video is to spend a little bit of time talking about stress, but ultimately I want to provide some techniques for dealing with test anxiety that will hopefully help you in the future. So the first thing I'm going to put out there is that actually stress is good and we should be making friends with stress. Okay, just bear with me and I'll explain what I mean. Stress is something that's evolved over millions of years to keep us safe. It's the thing that makes the warthog run away when it sees the lion. Okay, it keeps us alive. Effectively, your stress response kicks in when your body realizes that something's wrong and action needs to be taken. If stress was a bad thing, the predator would always win because the warthog would have a panic attack and get eaten. So actually, stress is a helpful response to a tricky situation. Now as it stands, most people don't spend their days evading predators in sub-Saharan Africa, and so our stress response has shifted to more everyday situations, like getting stuck in traffic, or taking exams. But that doesn't mean that it's less useful. Feeling stressed about an exam is your body's way of telling you that you have work to do. It's a release of adrenaline that's designed to put us in an optimal state of stress to make us focus, to drive us and keep us motivated. But unfortunately, a lot of people misinterpret what is going on when they start to feel stressed. And they automatically think that it's something bad and that they have to make it go away. So they distract themselves or they ignore it or they think that something's really wrong with them and they dwell on it. And that ultimately makes the problem worse and turns good, optimal, productive stress into bad, destructive stress, which then tips you over the edge on the performance curve that you can see on the screen now, pushing you into the realms of fatigue and exhaustion, anxiety, panic and anger, and ultimately burnout. Okay, so the thing to bear in mind is that stress is a natural biological response to a tricky situation. But actually, it's made worse by psychological and cognitive factors which cause good stress to be interpreted as bad stress. So, here are my top tips for dealing with exam stress. Top tip number one, make sure you are prepared. Being underprepared is a key factor in exam anxiety. Remember, the anxiety that you feel when you find out about an upcoming exam is your body reminding you that you're not ready. And that's fine, everybody has to revise it before an exam. So, having a sturdy revision and preparation routine is really important, and it'll help you keep your exam anxiety at bay. Now, obviously, you have to be familiar with the content. However, you've also got to make sure that your revision is relevant. Okay, so it's about being ready for the exam experience. Spending a week before your exam reading your textbook isn't relevant revision, unless you're taking a reading exam. 
So make sure you're doing things like actually answering exam questions, maybe practice in timed conditions. You could even set your desk up to look like an exam table. Okay, so things like that. Also, don't cram. I know that some people think that it works for them and you may have had some success with it in the past, but once you realize that there's too much to learn in the short amount of time that you've given yourself before the exam, you'll soon move from the zone of optimal stress into the zone of destructive stress. If you don't do as well as you were hoping on that exam because you didn't prepare, it will only feed the anxiety and make you think that you aren't good at the subject. Top tip number two, banish negative thoughts. Now, when Henry Ford came up with this quote, I'm fairly certain he was just trying to sound clever and he wasn't completely aware that he'd stumbled on a psychological golden nugget. But actually, there's a whole host of research showing that our thoughts affect our feelings, which then in turn affects our behavior. And it even forms the basis of psychological therapies like CBT. So when we encounter stressful situations, we have a tendency to tell ourselves negative things, which actually only increases or maintains our stress levels. And that can also quite quickly turn into a little bit of a vicious cycle. So here's an example. You're in the run-up to the next big exam. You've been revising hard, and as part of your preparation, the teacher gives you a little mini test in class. Unfortunately, you don't do very well, and this is what happens. You start to think things like, what's the point? I'm stupid. The emotion that follows on from that is sadness and anxiety for the big test coming up. That doesn't make you feel great, and so you have a craving to make that feeling go away which then results in behaviors like not trying or trying to distract yourself so that you can kind of ignore that feeling of sadness and anxiety. That makes you feel better in the short term, but actually you haven't dealt with the problem. And so the test comes back round and you get a bad result and that then reinforces the thought process. Now this process can be both negative and positive. So actually you could change this thought process into something like this. Same situation, you get a bad result in the test, and then your thought is, this is good to know, I better go back over that. The emotion is, you feel encouraged, you feel positive, and you feel like you're going to be more prepared. That's a good feeling, so you want to maintain it. The behavior then that comes from that is, you get stuck into the bits that you got wrong. And the reward is that you feel prepared, and you do well in the next test, and then the cycle becomes positive. So what I would like to suggest is that you start to identify your negative thoughts and try and replace them with more positive ones. So here are some examples. Instead of thinking, I can't do this, start thinking, I can do this. I didn't revise hard enough. I have always worked hard enough. I always do badly in exams. Past exams do not reflect my ability, you know, and so on and so on. Find some time in your day to practice positive thinking. Stand in front of a mirror in your bedroom and say these things to yourself. I can do this. I've revised a lot. If I make mistakes, it's not the end of the world. I am ready. I am awesome. And so on. Okay? It's not going to be easy at first, and you'll probably feel a little bit silly doing it. But if you can do it every single day, then it will have a massive impact on A, the way that you feel, and B, your behaviors as well. Top tip number three is visualization. So visualization is a technique used in psychology. Put simply, it's the process of creating a mental image of what you want to achieve and the emotions that go with it. So visualization can help you prepare for an exam because it can take away some of the unknowns that can cause your anxiety to spike and it can help you prepare for the majority of eventualities. Effectively, if you imagine that you're gonna fail, then you increase your chances of doing so. And I imagine most people can think of a time when that has actually happened to them. So we're gonna to attempt to do the opposite. So spend a couple of minutes every evening in the run up to an exam in a quiet room doing something like this. And I'll give you an example. Picture yourself walking into the classroom or exam hall with a smile on your face. Focus on your own sense of confidence and block out all of the stress of the other test takers around you. Visualize yourself sitting down, taking a deep breath, quieting your mind, 
and hearing the exam invigilator saying, you can start. Visualize yourself opening up the exam, looking at the first question, and confidently working your way through. Also, and this is an important bit, spend some time visualizing a difficult situation. Perhaps an essay question that you're not sure how to answer. Imagine taking some breaths, feeling calm, and coming up with a plan to work through the answer with the stuff that you do know. Finally, visualize walking out of the exam at the end and feeling happy and proud. Not only that you've made it through without panicking, but also in the knowledge that you've done more than enough to do well. Now it sounds like a lot, but actually you can do that whole thing in just a couple of minutes every night. And again, it's gonna take a little bit of practice to do, but it will be worth it. Because what will happen is, when you get round to your exam, you'll walk in and it'll all feel really familiar, like you've been there a thousand times before. It will be calming and it will boost your confidence as well. You'll be able to block out all of the stress of the other people. And of course, if you end up facing an essay question that you've got no idea how to answer, rather than let the anxiety set in, you'll know that you can take deep breaths, just like you practiced when you were visualizing it. You can calm yourself and you can come up with a plan of how to answer it, again, because you've practiced doing just that and you've visualized what it is that you're going to do. And then you'll walk out at the end feeling just like you practiced feeling, like you've done more than enough to pass, and chances are, when you get your result, you will be pleasantly surprised. Okay, so this is a change in mindset that can have a knock-on effect on your feelings, your behaviors, and your habits, and it's a really, really, really effective tool to combat exam anxiety. Top tip number four is breathe. Okay, now I love this quote that's on the screen now. Um, it came from Fritz Perls, a psychiatrist and the founder of Gestalt Therapy. Now, breathing is one of the most effective ways of controlling your anxiety. I'll try not to get too biological here, but this is why. If we were to have a look inside the body of somebody who is afraid and anxious, and then compare it to the inside of a body of somebody who is excited and exhilarated, we wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The very same hormones and the very same mechanisms that produce excitement also produce fear. And it's actually the way that those things are interpreted by the mind that produces the end response. So when you get into a situation and you start to feel that familiar stress response kicking in, and you can feel, amongst other things, your breathing becoming quite rapid, that's your brain telling your lungs and the rest of your body to get ready because something's about to happen. Now, the good thing is that your lungs aren't passive in this relationship. And if you can take some really deep breaths, you can communicate to your brain that actually everything's okay. There's no need to panic. At which point your brain will communicate that to the rest of your body and the feelings of anxiety will slowly but surely go away again which then means that you will move from that zone of destructive stress into back into the zone of productive stress. Okay, so some little tips then for breathing. Make sure you are taking deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. It helps to slightly purse your lips on the way out as well. Another nice one to do is breathe in for three seconds, hold it for three seconds, and then breathe out for three seconds, okay? And as you kind of do it more and more, you might want to extend it to four seconds or even five seconds. You can also combine your breathing with some of your other techniques, like visualization. So you could use the visualization technique to think of your happy place. And then you could combine your breathing with the visualization of your happy place, which then, again, could reduce the amount of stress that you're experiencing. Okay, so that's just another way in which you could control your exam anxiety. Now, I've said this before, um, but all of these things are gonna be new things for you. Okay, so it's always gonna take a little bit of effort and a little bit of 
work to start a new routine like this okay so some of these things will work for you some of them might not work for you and that's okay but you need to make sure that you give them a good try it doesn't matter how silly you feel sitting in your room visualizing your happy place or visualizing the exam or whatever if you can push through and do it then i am very confident that it will help you okay and my final little bit of advice is please don't fall into the perfectionist trap, okay? So everybody feels like they have to be perfect, but you don't have to be perfect, and you shouldn't expect to be perfect. Everybody makes mistakes, and it's okay to make mistakes. Mistakes help us to learn, and they help us to work out where we need to focus our energy. So just like making friends with stress, make friends with mistakes, okay? All that really matters is that you've worked hard you've tried your best, and you've done your best. So before I finish, I just want to say that, of course, if the techniques in this video or any other techniques that you've tried aren't working, and the way that you're feeling is starting to impact your ability to function in everyday life, then I would recommend you seek further support. Some examples of where you can do that are on the screen for you now, but obviously there are other places as well. Please don't suffer in silence. Reach out to the people around you, whether they are family members, friends, teachers, or professionals. Talk and open up about the way that you're feeling. It's very often the first step to doing something about it. So I hope this video has been useful and that at least one of the techniques in here helps you to deal with your exam anxiety. Thank you very much for listening and remember, you can do it. Thank you.